Hi, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of using Teleport database access to access a GCP Cloud SQL Postgres database. Before I dive too deep into the documentation and demo, uh, Teleport is an access plane for accessing your infrastructure. One of the core benefits of Teleport is it goes to your central identity provider. And the best way to show you is I'm just going to do a quick demo. So here I have um, my command line and I'm going to use TSH login, which is going to log into a um, root cluster, which I've already created. And I'm going to log in using GitHub. So this is going to log me in. And here I have um, arranged certificates for different pieces of my infrastructure, my SSH infrastructure. But for this video, we're focusing in on databases. So you can see already I have um, a few databases and different providers. Today, we're going to focus on this Cloud SQL um, example. So now I have access, I need to log into it. I need to log in. And then next up, I need to connect. There's this option here, but because I'm logging into a uh, Google MySQL database, I'm using the default um, database name, which is Postgres. And my DB user here is this kind of long-ish account. This is an IAM service user, which I'll show you how to create. And then lastly, I'm picking the name, which is the Cloud SQL. And um, here we are, we're in um, the database. I can uh, show you all of the service accounts which we have added um, and what they can do in the database. So let me just uh, exit. So I've exited the database. If I come back to teleport, I have a audit role so I can also see all of the activity that happened. And so here we can see that a database session has started on my cluster, which user it was connecting to the database, uh, the IP address the database. But most importantly, you can see that the user here is my name. And then this is all linked back to my SSO identity. So this kind of brings me to the end of like the quick introduction to the demo. Let's dive into um, this quick architecture diagram. And I'll kind of like talk you how I set this up. So for my setup, I'm using my demo cluster, which is hosted in um, AWS Cloud. And of course, these services are on GCP. I have a DB service here. This DB service is going to dial back to my Teleport root cluster, which is my auth and proxy. And then I have a Cloud SQL database and I have two service accounts. One of these services accounts is used for giving the credentials to give access to this database. And another one is used for the database user. I'll kind of go through this and explain it a bit more um, as we go through the documentation. So when you're setting this up, one of the first things you want to do is enable um, Cloud SQL IAM authentication for your database. There's a new database flag here, and you can make sure that it's been turned on. So if I come to my instance here, you can see um, down here, Cloud SQL IAM authentication is on. So it's on this first page. Next up, you need to create a service account for the database. And Teleport uses this service account to connect to the database. I've named it Teleport here. It's a Cloud SQL instance user. And then you create the IAM user. This Cloud IAM user is the same one that we will use in the terminal to log in. So here we have Teleport at the project name and then Cloud SQL IAM. This is the user that we'll use later. So if you'd have a, um, a range of different teams in your organization and you want to like share the same login and privileges, you can use Teleport to effectively like share access, but you know which user is logging into which database when. You need to add that to the database. So if I come to the instance here, you can see we have users. And there's IAM users built in. Just as a note, once you turn on IAM authentication, you can't log in with password. You can only go through using IAM um, service accounts. And here's my user, PG um, Teleport. Next up, you need to create a service account for the Teleport database service. This is our database service. 
And this is going to let you um, create tokens. We have a list of what you need for the um, service account permissions, but all it needs is the ability to get IAM tokens and um, to download the instances root CA. You can download the keys and set this environment variables. You can also attach the role to the instance, which is my preferred method of doing it. Our next step is you gather all of the SQL inst instance information, the project ID, the SQL instance, the endpoint, the root CA, and we're gonna use this later. Next up, you create the teleport auth and proxy service. This guide is designed for people who are just getting started from zero. If you're using teleport cloud or you already have it set up, you can skip a lot of this. But once you come down to here, this is an important part. You need to create a um, DB auth token for when you invite the nodes. I often create a type DB and node, so I can always use teleport to access and debug things as I go along. Next up here, we are creating a user. In my case, I've decided to use GitHub as my central identity provider. And then in this user, you need to change the traits and you need to like give the ability for your user to access the role that you created earlier. So if I come to my setup, I have access. This access role is for anyone who has it available, but you can see under DB user, I've added PG teleport. And this is my project ID. This is important because this gets baked into the certificate. And if you don't have it here, you won't be able to access the instance. And also set database names. This can also be wildcard if you want to provide access to all of the databases. Next up, we're creating the database service. That is this sort of instance here. What's cool about this instance is, you know, we can have this instance running in a sort of alongside as a sidecar to our Google Cloud Compute, and then dials back to my central root cluster in Amazon without opening any other ports. So does it using a reverse tunnel. As we go through here, you can see there's a few things you need to um, pick the name, description, protocols, Postgres, the URI. This is the public IP address. One thing I found while setting this up is if you have a connection here, while it says public IP, it doesn't mean that it's sort of public to the whole internet. You need to also add authorized networks. And so what I've done here is the only authorized network is the IP address of my teleport service. This means that other instances in my GCP account can't connect to it, or I can't connect to it using sort of SSH or something else. There's cloud SQL proxy if you wanted to connect to it as well. The CA cert file, um, you can get that from, I think the overview page. Let's have a look for it. Some of these things can be a little hidden. You can also export it using Terraform, which is my preferred method. Yes, yeah, so you can download certificates here. And lastly, you set the GCP. Um, these are specific for Google Cloud instances. The project ID is obviously the ID of your project. And the Cloud SQL instance ID is, is the name of the instance. It's not an ID. So in my case, my instance is called master instance. That is my ID. And then when you start this service, we've passed in the token um, using a um, file format. The last step is you need to set GCP credentials. For my instance, I can show you what it looks like. So for my instance here, I have a pretty smallish instance. And you can see it's on a, a network. Um, where do we come down here? Yes, here we have service account. So this service account 
um, let's access. And you can also even limit this cloud API access scopes just down to Cloud SQL. And this is the easiest way to set Google application credentials, but your credentials are also sort of available on the host. So the service account makes it um, more secure. So to connect. Here, let's go through this demo again. So I'm going to exit. Come back. So I'm logging into my proxy and I have my auth already configured with GitHub. This can log me in. You do T, uh, TSHDB LS and then TSHDB. Let's move this up. To Cloud SQL. If you see these commands here, we can try and see what happens, but I, this won't connect. So you might get this message, say RCP invalid, contains an invalid argument, make sure that it has the service account creator a role. The reason for this is it's not logging in as the right user. So if we now do um, connect, pick the name and the DB user, our connection should be successful. And actually in here, you can see that we have this PG um, user, which is the cloud SQL IAM user. And this is sort of created on our behalf when we created the instance. Um, and then we have a more instructions here. Um, you can also use um, DB config. And then last up, if you want to remove credentials, you can just log out or use um, TSH DB log out to log out of all instances. Hopefully this video was helpful. I have found a few quirks of when setting up um, GCP. You may also find that you need to turn on certain API APIs if you have like a fresh account. But if you have any questions, please hit us up on our Slack channel or our GitHub discussions. Thanks for watching.